Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome to your weekly messages for March 26th to April 1st. And if you would happen to hop on Facebook and see this, I know I'm doing it early. Um, it'll get published to YouTube at regular time on Sunday. Um, but I'm not going to be able to record this on Sunday. So that's why I have to do it super early this week. Okay. Hello, everybody. Thank you for hopping on. I'm going to keep it simple today. I still have to pack and do a bunch of stuff. So um, I'm just going to get this in. Going back to basics. And then as usual, if you have any questions, just let me know in the comments section. Okay, <clears throat> so I have a few oracle cards today, so I'm going to go ahead and get started with that. Let's see what's coming through from the Alchemist Oracle. We have Abundance. Okay, good message to have coming through right from the get-go, so you have plenty of resources to tap into this week. Whatever you are looking for, you can cultivate. It's just about asking. I personally find Mercury retrograde to be a really great time to manifest. So if you want to take advantage of that, you can definitely make that happen. Set your intention. It's always a good time to do that. There's no wrong time to set intentions. And then higher knowledge. So this is you looking out and either seeking an expert or somebody to give advice, um, somebody trustworthy, of course, or this is you kind of independently going solo with education. Okay, so higher knowledge. This is more of like um, an institutional or like proper form of education is coming up as being really important. So data, research, teachers, scholars, and then I have the affirmator, the affirmators cards. These ones are more relationship based, but I'm going to pick two of them. Okay, so the first one, we have integrity. I align with the center of myself, a glowing core of personal integrity. E emanating from this core is the knowledge that I never have to compromise who I am for what I want for anybody. I can live a life that doesn't include settling unless I want to settle, in which case settling would be my idea of perfection and would cease to be considered settling. Ugh, paradoxes hurt. Okay, so that is the first one. I love these cards, they're so cute. And then the next one we have coming through is Honesty. This heralds a wonderful time of rooting yourself in complete and total honesty. It might seem scary to tell the truth all the time with everyone about everything, but when you practice radical honesty, you can stop hiding and start relaxing. The best part is honesty from you inspires honesty from others. What results in a root and toot and trust and parade and everyone's invited except the bagpipe players because you know they'll show up anyway. Okay, so it's definitely, you can see there's a theme. Speak your truth, ask for what you need, be honest about where you're at and trust that it's going to be received. Okay, so I'm going to do the um, Celtic cross and then I will clarify with the Sovereign Oracle. <clears throat> okay, and then there's still two weeks left on this campaign. It's definitely a go. So if you haven't had um, time to get yours, it will either be in the description box on YouTube or the link is all over the place on my Facebook page. Okay. So the central energy this week, we have the Empress Femininity. And again, this has to do with receiving, similar to the Abundance card. So that's really the, um, that's really the theme of the week. If you're honest with yourself, if you're having personal integrity, if you are doing the right things that are in alignment for you, you really can't go wrong. It's when you're out of alignment that you start getting all of this gobbledygook coming into your space. So make sure that you're being honest and trusting that things that are right for you will be attracted to you. 
And that's true for resources, people, opportunities, whatever you're looking for at this time. The crossing energy, we have the Nine of Cups. Ask. This is the Make-A-Wish card. So if you want to take a moment to make a wish, you're welcome to do that. But this is really what's going to make this happen is asking for it. And the more you're comfortable with that, the easier this week is going to be. And the easier it's going to be to cultivate support from the other areas of your life as well. So this is a good week to practice, especially if you're uncomfortable with it. Um, I know that communication can get kind of murky during Mercury retrograde, but don't, I, I mean, don't give it too much thought. You Practice can be small. You don't have to take quantum leaps. You can just do little baby steps when it comes to communication when it feels right. And then also asking your guides, angels, divine source, whatever you work with, um, asking, making wishes, having them send things your way. Okay, the what's shifting out is the hierophant. So this is rigid thinking. What that means is if you're getting too trapped in thoughts of what you know one way is the right way um the lack of flexibility in terms of the way that you are receiving information behavior relationships it's kind of like with the hierophant shifting out that means you're coming into expansion and kind of reviewing what it is that you are doing within yourself to perceive things a certain way. So this is all about perception. It's all about the old belief systems shifting out, the old black and white ways of thinking are shifting out, and you're calling in more of the gray area. The oncoming energy, we have the Six of Cups. This is connection, soulmates, celebration, nostalgia, kind of referring back to good times when you were able to really feel into your personal sense of happiness and joy and just being able to feel content. That is what's coming through. So you have this to look forward to. This is a particularly good omen if you are in the process of manifesting partnership or if you have something going with a partner or a potential partner, this is definitely a good one to see on the horizon. Um, and then I, I'm also getting the sense that this is going to be after this week. So this is like present time with shifting out. And then this is coming after the, the 1st of April. In the outward manifestation, you have the Three of Swords. So this is all of those fear pictures coming up. I'll clarify this just to see like what the context is. Because remember, this isn't external influences it's just how like like what is your personal process what's what is outward um like what's being exposed is how i like to look at it so let's see Consistency, hold space for a sustainable vision, find supportive rituals, attract co-creators through the power and devotion of your enduring action. Persistence is required. Okay, so this, this means that you might have good days, bad days, good days, bad days. It might feel a little bit more turbulent than usual. It might feel like things aren't consistent and that is causing fear or frustration. And so this is about finding the consistency and stability within yourself. Um, I also think that the Three of Swords is you predetermining or dress rehearsing tragedy. So uh, this has been a theme that's been coming up a lot with tons of clients and people that I have around me not leaving space for things to evolve organically, just jumping to conclusions, already writing the script yourself. And, and so the more you can find balance within yourself and stability within yourself, the easier things are going to be and the easier it's going to be to manage. Um, again, I think this is a perception. I think this is you kind of, it's as if you predict things to go sour ahead of time that you'll be spared of hurt because you just give yourself permission to give up or retreat and that's an illusion okay so 
In the subconscious, we have the chariot, a lot of forward movement. I think that there's a little bit of like some some chaos coming up, which is why it's showing up as, uh-oh, things are feeling out of control or moving too fast, and that's causing me to feel grief and fear. Um, so this is, again, these these things look connected and it's through the empress or self-compassion the motherly side of yourself finding the internal mother to uh, be compassionate and forgiving that is what's going to remedy this so that's really what's bringing things together and as long as you honor your feelings and you acknowledge them you don't need to stuff them in a closet but you can also be skeptical you don't have to act on the fear remember that the advice for you this week is the wheel of fortune again this is leaning into uncertainty my new favorite um, interpretation of the wheel of fortune because if you guys have been on my channel long enough you know that it's one of my least favorite cards in the tarot deck i don't like unpredictability um, but with this, it's the way I like to look at it now so that I have uh, developed a better relationship with this card is that you need that space so that miracles can occur. If you already know exactly what's going to happen at every single moment, then there's no space for things to be better than you expected. And so with the uncertainty comes better possibilities and the potential for better things to come in rather than just predicting heartache, predicting loss, predicting tragedy when that's not always the case. Sometimes it is. That's why you have to be honest with yourself. Um, but at the end of the day, if you leave a little bit of space, if you have a little bit of skepticism, a lot of things can occur that are far better than you expect. The external influences, we have the star, see things are falling into place even if you can't see it. Things are going well, it's kind of like this is alignment with your destiny, I'm using that word loosely because I don't like it. Um, it's just kind of like, yes, there's, there's a bigger picture at work, there is a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes and the more you can trust and kind of loosen your grip on needing to know what comes next, the faster it will manifest. So letting go and surrendering, I know it's very cliche, but the more you can do it, the faster you're going to create the space for things to come in. The hopes and fears, we have judgment. This is you being in the incubator. So I think that there's a certain level of, I need time and space to process. And there's also a little bit of fear of things becoming dormant. And I do think that that has to do with the astrology this week. Um, as we know, Mercury retrograde is gonna th slow things way down. And because of that, it can feel like things have become you know, they're just at a standstill, but that's not the case. It's just, you know, asking you to revisit and revise during this time. So it's not a negative. It's just, you know, it's a, it's a part of having a human experience. Okay. So I'm going to clarify that one for the hopes and fears. Resources. The time has come to look outside of yourself. Trust that all you need to make it possible is on its way to you. Lay the bricks that will create the path to your destination. So really look at what exactly have you been doing that isn't working. And it's the time to take a break so that you can figure out what do you need. Reevaluate. Look at what type of resources do you actually want to come into your space. What is the most important you can get everything you want, but maybe not all at the same time. So figure out what you can feasibly do first, what you'd like to focus on manifesting, and just take bite-sized pieces. You don't have to you don't have to do everything all at once. So that is what's coming through here. And then the outcome of the week where you're being left off is the Two of Swords. This is kind of a joke that I know that this deck has a very particular sense of humor. Um, and so what this is saying is you need to go back to basics. 
you have to go back to leaning on the uncertainty. Yes, I'm gonna, the deck is essentially saying, yes, good things are on the way, good things are happening, but you have to be comfortable not seeing ahead and not knowing every single thing that's coming your way. So I'll pull one more Sovereign Oracle card for the Two of Swords. Puer, I believe is how I've heard this pronounced. Trust in the magic of curious innocence. Embark on a ridiculous quest. Take on a passion project, but first check that it's not an escape hatch in a sexy disguise. This goes back to the honesty and integrity piece. So this is also, this also has to do with, um, you know, not and now this is looking like don't don't put on the blinders. You can also look at the reality of what's going on. Um, and it's just about not diving into unhealthy behaviors to cope with them. You want to make sure you're still staying grounded throughout all of this. And be the innocence piece is referring to be open to what's coming next. Be open to um, not knowing have that that childlike naivete a lot of kids you know they have the the really really nice thing about innocence is they're not jaded to the point where they're predicting the three of swords at every turn so if you can find your way back to that it's going to make this week a lot easier okay so that is all that i have for you this week i certainly hope you've enjoyed this reading and until next time have a wonderful march and i will talk to you later